Hello, YouTube family and friends. I'm coming to you from a 70 degree day in Fort Worth, Texas. My apologies for not being around the last week or so, but if you haven't been living under a rock, you probably know why. And I probably should stop rocking this rocker. Let me tilt a little bit. I also apologize, I'm sitting out on my balcony trying to get my face in the sun, but that means I cannot see what I look like on the screen. I see there is a shadow behind me from the upper level balcony. But uh, I wanted to address two questions and one myth in this video today, but I think I need to start with the last week that Texas has lived through. And yes, you'll probably hear some road traffic. I'm not very far from the road. And then there's a, another apartment complex across the street where they have a little bit of commotion once in a while. And there goes a truck. So hopefully you're not hearing too much of it through my earbuds. But we're just happy that traffic is actually moving again. Since over the past week, it's been probably the craziest week I've had in the 20 plus years I've lived in Texas. The last video I uploaded was of the surprise Valentine's snowstorm we received on Sunday, Valentine's Day. I was actually scheduled to photograph a wedding that night, which has been postponed till next Sunday night, which I think was a wise move, even though I did see one friend actually got married that night on her front porch. So good for her. But uh, we ended up getting probably in this area maybe four to five inches of snow throughout the week which is really unheard of in this part of a texas oh that sun feels good on my face and of course everything shuts down but what's not supposed to shut down is the power grid and the water treatment plants i'm not going to go into all the details but if you like i say if you haven't been under a rock the past week you've understood that up to 50% of the state of Texas was without power for anywhere from a few hours to a whole week last week, which made it difficult for people to get to work, made it difficult for people to stay clean. It shut down all the grocery stores because they were cut off also. So my biggest struggle in this whole thing has been to try to get adequate supplies of meat for my carnivore diet. Fortunately, since I moved to a 50 pl 55 year old plus active senior living apartment in January, I was on the list of places that could not be cut off because too many people here require oxygen to be generated from their electric. There's a machine, I guess, that takes air and purifies it into pure oxygen if you have trouble breathing and they run off of the electricity you get in your apartment. So we were not cut off this week, which was very fortunate and we did not end up in a boil water situation, which was also very fortunate. The unfortunate part was all of my coworkers were in one of those areas. So I ended up working by myself most of the week. I ended up working six shifts in five days. And I was very, very blessed that the Fort Worth Police Department was authorized to pick us up and take us to work in the patrol cars. Therefore, I didn't have to risk the icy roads or having a collision in my own vehicle. That really helped uh, lower my stress level, even though it was a bit of a stress to have to go in early and cover for people that couldn't or wouldn't come in on numerous days and then stay my entire shift. You might be hearing the wind chimes. Yeah, it's a little bit windy and some of the shadow, which you may or not be seeing now, is from my Santa Claus wind chime that was Miss Alice's. So I'll tell about Miss Alice in another video if you don't already know about her. But I've received two questions in the comments on past videos that I would like to address today. The first one was, how did I quit sugar? Okay, that, that is a good question, but it's not 100% accurate. I have not actually quit sugar, but I have greatly reduced my sugar intake. I'm down to under 30 grams of total carbs a day. Forget about that net carb stuff that you hear people talk about. That's just a way for people to cheat, because you really don't know 
how your body's going to uh, digest the stuff to make it a net carb. So if you're looking at carbs, just look at total carbs. But the uh, correct answer is I have converted over to eating about 70% of my calories from fat, good fat. Not the kind of fat the doctor tells you to eat, but good fat, which according to Verda is butter, coconut oil, canola oil, cream cheese, sour cream, and olive oil. And of course the fat in naturally occurring fatty meats like ribeye, 73% hamburger, and things like that. And then I add, um, Verda wants you to add one ounce to two ounces of fat to every meal. So I found some, a brand called Lighthouse Ranch Dressing at Sam's Club, which has canola oil as the main ingredient instead of soybean oil. You really want to get rid of all the soybean oils, vegetable oils, corn oils, and uh, to some extent palm oil and soft flour oil. All that stuff is not good for you. There's some debate over canola, but the people I work with seem to think it's all right. And you get rid of those because of what they call PUFAs, which are uh, polyunsaturated fatty acids. That's what actually causes, in my opinion, I'm not a doctor, I'm not a nutritionist, so don't take me at face value. Do your own research, which you can easily do on YouTube. But it's kind of common knowledge now that the PUFAs, potential polyunsaturated fatty acids are what cause the LDL cholesterol to oxidize, which causes the arterial, arterial sclerosis, the, where the cholesterol builds up in your arteries. I'm not sure I'm saying that word right, but I think you know what I mean. But uh, you really should cut out as many PUFAs as you can, but unfortunately, soybean oil is in almost everything, so you have to be very, very careful. And you don't have to eliminate PUFAs, but you just need to reduce them. That almost means you can't eat anything fried, fried out at the restaurants, or um, anything breaded, because that's generally how they fry things. But that doesn't exactly answer the question of how I cut out sugar. I cut out sugar by increasing my good fats, i.e. saturated fat, which helps satiate you when you're not hungry you're not craving sugar and uh, I'm gonna get into that a little bit more when I get into the myth that I'm gonna dispel that calories in uh, calories in has to be less than calories out in order for you to lose weight that's really not true and I'm gonna go into that after I answer the next question so the next question I got from a, a commenter on my unpacking the Verda health uh, starter pack was if you need a prescription to be on Verda. The answer to that is not from your PCP or not from your primary care doctor. Verda has their own doctors and they work very closely with your insurance company if you have insurance. If not, they'll work with you on a payment plan. I believe it's rather expensive if you have to pay for it yourself, but if you go to just Google Verda Health on uh, Google, and on their front page, it'll, there'll be a, a place potential customers slash members can begin the process. You fill out the information there and a intake counselor will arrange a, or you'll arrange a call with an intake counselor. It's all done over the web. You go to their calendar and sign up for when it's convenient for you, then they call you and they go over, make sure you qualify uh, and each insurance has different qualifications. Generally, if you're pre-diabetic or type 2 diabetic, almost any insurance would cover it. The City of Fort Worth insurance would also cover it if you had a fasting glucose reading greater than 102 or an A1C greater than 5.7, which technically diagnoses you as pre-diabetic. I was not a pre-diabetic, but I did have my last fasting glucose reading was over 100, so that qualified me. So the intake counselor calls you, you answer questions to them, you talk about your medical history, they find out what insurance you have, and then they handle it from there. 
they present it to your insurance company. And it really is a wise move for the insurance companies to get you on this program because it it is known and has the potential to reverse prediabetes and type 2 diabetes and definitely you lose weight which are all cost saving factors for insurance companies because then they're not having to give you metformin and insulin and expensive doctor's visits later down the road. I cannot say whether your insurance company will take it or if you're willing to pay for it out of pocket but that but to say that you need a prescription to join is not exactly accurate excuse me <coughs> so go on to google verta health i don't remember if it's vertahealth.com or verta-health or what but google google verta health v-i-r-t-a or you can look at my old videos and have the box there for the name and then just click on their website and look up how to get started and if you have any questions or concerns make a comment down below okay but while you're while we're doing that why don't you make a comment I've kind of already mentioned this but if you believe the way to lose weight is to have less calories in than counter calories out please comment in the the comments right now and tell me whether you believe that is true or false the other thing that goes along with that is eat less move more if you have a feeling on either of those statements, eat less, move more, helps you lose weight, or basically the same thing as bringing in less calories than you burn, helps you to lose weight, please comment down below right now, and then I'm going to go into what I believe on that. But comments, hitting the like button, hitting the subscribe button, and, uh, well, even the dislike button. Anything you do underneath this video helps YouTube algorithm to push it out to more people, which is what I need. I need to get first off a hundred subscribers and then a thousand subscribers, or it's really useless for me to continue doing this. So if you get any value at all out of my videos, please uh, subscribe, comment, and then either hit the like or the dislike button. If you're getting benefit, please hit the like button. If I'm rambling on and it's not worth it, please hit the dislike button. It really doesn't matter to me as long as you're doing something in the comments because that boosts the YouTube, YouTube algorithms in my favor. And I really need things in my favor at the moment. But, uh, okay, let's talk about what doctors, nutritionists, fitness trainers all tell you. I'm going to kind of hit both of them with the same brush. How many of you have heard in order to lose weight, you have to have less calories coming in than you have going out. Or the kind of the similar or synonym of that is eat less, move more. Maybe the best thing to write in the comments is if you've heard those in the past and you tried them, did they work? Did they work long term or did they work short term? And were you hungry during the process? Okay, so questions. Have you ever heard calories in need to be less than calories out to lose weight? Have you ever heard eat less and move more if you want to lose weight? And question number three, what was the result of that? And was it lasting and long term? And did you reap health benefits from it? That's a lot for you to comment on. And I really appreciate if everybody that watches this comments on that. So here's my take on it, what I've learned in the last few months or maybe the last year because I have done everything like that. I have reduced my calories, I have increased my burn, I have almost starved and exercised more. When you almost die at 50, you kind of do whatever you think somebody knows might be right. So you trust fitness trainers, you trust uh, multi-level marketing companies that this protein drink is what you need and it'll help you. You take supplements, you walk, you exercise, you join gyms, you lift weights, and yes, it works. Yes, I had a very good run a couple of years ago with Neutralite and Planet Fitness, but as soon as I got off of it, kaboom, everything came back because I didn't know that all of those things are wrong, fundamentally wrong. And the reason they're fundamentally wrong is that they do not take into your insulin response into what you eat. I did not realize that insulin was a hormone. I just thought it was something that diabetics didn't make or didn't make enough of. 
That part is true, but it is actually a hormone that when you eat sugar and or carbohydrates that turn into sugar, so a potato, a pasta, a piece of bread, you might as well be eating table sugar. They all turn into glucose and then your body has to increase the insulin in order to uh, turn down the glucose because you don't want to have too high of a glucose level or then you'll uh, become diabetic. So that's why they test your A1C and here recently your fasting glucose. So basically, if you don't address the insulin response, you're never going to lose weight because what insulin does is it tells your body to store sugar as fat. So that's the reason, one of the main reasons you have to cut down on sugar and starchy carbohydrates. You can still have some carbohydrates because you, you need a little bit of glucose, but if you don't bring it in, your body will make it. So don't worry about you know that you have to have glucose for your brain that's another lie your brain operates better on ketones than it does on glucose and ketones are what you make once you start burning the fat in your body versus burning the sugar that you take in because uh, every time you bring in your body can only handle about one teaspoon of sugar at a time in the blood anything over that it converts to fat and you store it and if you you have your insulin isn't working correctly you get into this state called insulin resistance where you have had so much glucose for so long the insulin can't open the ports to get the the sugar out of your blood that's why i ended up with high triglycerides i was drinking multiple large sodas every day so i was just actually way 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 too much sugar coming in and not enough going out so by reducing my sugar load I am now down to less than 30 grams a day because I use the fat to satiate me which means I'm hungry I'm, I'm full I'm not hungry I don't have cravings and that's why you eat sugar generally is because you have a craving the wonderful thing about keto and carnivore is it's probably the most forgiving way of eating you've ever done if you eat too many carbs one day, you just start over with the next meal. And then you get back down. Because the whole thing is you've got to reduce the glucose in your system so that your body will actually start burning your fat. I'll give a quick update on my weight loss. I, am, I will be on the scale with Verta four days tomorrow. And as of today, I'm down 10.6 pounds. So I assume I'll go down a little bit more tomorrow. So let's say 11 pounds. So that's 2.75 pounds average per week, which is incredible. Especially since I'd already been on the carnivore diet, even though I was doing it a little bit wrong, I was eating too much protein, but I'd been on that diet for approximately three months and had already started losing weight. So I'm very happy with 11 pounds in four weeks. I don't expect that to continue, but I also don't expect it to come back on. My rate of loss should slow down now that I'm keto adapted, which means I can switch back from glucose to ketones fairly easily. And if I go a little bit over my 30 grams, it's not going to really stack on the pounds. But uh, I can't really tell how long this has been, but it's probably been too long. so. Uh, three answers. No, you don't have to completely cut out sugar, but if you increase your fat to 70%, drop your protein to about 20%, 20 to 30, and your carbs under 10%, or 30 grams maximum for a six foot one male. If you're a five foot one female, you might only be able to handle 25 grams, but that's only for a short period until your body heals itself then you can slowly increase to see what your carb tolerance is. So no, you don't have to 100% cut out sugar. I still eat a little bit of dark chocolate every day when I get in the mood. Dark chocolate because it has uh, blood pressure lowering things, which my blood pressure has gone significantly lower. Not that I had high blood pressure, but it's perfect every time I go to the doctor now. Myth number, or question number two, no, you do not need a prescription from your PCP to get on Verta, but Verta will notify your PCP 
and give them your biomarkers and your success. They'll fax it to them about, I don't know if it's once a week or once a month, but they'll want to know who your PCP is, but he doesn't, he or she doesn't need to write you a prescription. And a lot of the things you've been told as fact from your medical providers are actually myths or falsities. Uh, I look forward to the discussion and I look forward to getting this posted. Y'all have a great day and I am so happy that we're at 70 degrees in Texas and all the snow is melted and most of the people have water back on and electricity. Y'all have a great day. Thanks for watching and please subscribe. Thank you. Bye-bye.